Hello guys, welcome to Wednesday's lesson. We are halfway through the week. Yes, congratulations for all of your hard work so far. Today we are doing a feedback lesson. So before we get started, can you please make sure that you have your descriptive writing based on the fun fair from the 28th of January? If you can't find this descriptive writing, email me and I will send you a copy that you can work on. Pause the video and only come back when you've got a piece of descriptive writing based on the fun fair in front of you, please. OK, if you're back, that means you're ready to copy down our title, date and learning objective. Pause the video and come back after you've written these three things, please. OK, now it's time to complete the do now. Today, you're going to copy the five sentences and then you're going to correct the spag errors. Remember, spag is spelling, punctuation and grammar. Here are the five sentences. There are some spag errors in each of them. Pause the video, copy the sentences and correct the errors now, please. OK, it's time for you to make your purple pen corrections. Give it a tick if you got it right. If you got it wrong, make sure you give it a cross and make any further corrections. Let's go through some of these answers. So number one, Mr Fairburn organised an assembly. You need a capital F for Fairburn because it is a proper noun. And an assembly, this is really important. If you want to say a something and the word after ends in, begins in a vowel, so an A, E, I, O, or U, you need to use an an before it, which is here. If, if it ends in a consonant, so any of the other letters, it needs to be an A. So if it said Mr Fairburn organised a football match, it would be an A instead of an an. So an is for words after that begin with vowels and A is for word, words after that begin with consonants. Two, she didn't know the answer. Obviously, we have the full stop at the end. And didn't is a combination of did and not. So we need to use an apostrophe to join the two letters together. Suddenly, comma, the dog stopped running. My mum needed to buy milk, egg, bacon and chocolate. This is a list. So the items in the list are separated by commas. Jumping in the car, he made a speedy escape. Capital letter for C here isn't needed because this is a common noun. And the comma here is needed to make the sentence make sense. Remember, when you see a comma, you need to pause. Without pausing, the sentence would sound something like this. Jumping in the car, he made a speedy escape. But with the comma, it's jumping in the car, he made a speedy escape. So the comma makes sure that the sentence makes sense. Just going to rub some of these notes off so that you can pause the video now and make any corrections that you need to. Come back when that's done. OK, so today we are looking at descriptive writing feedback. Firstly, we're going to look at what went well. One of the things that we did well was using the checklists to help us organise our ideas. For example, using a zoom out checklist to ensure that we do all of these four steps to make sure that our zoom out checklist is the best. So. 
Your task for your what went well is in the yellow box here. You're going to go back to your assessment and you're going to use the checklist to colour code each of your paragraphs. Before you do that, I'm going to show you what I expect using this response here. I'm going to imagine this is mine. Firstly, I'm going to read it to remember what I've written. In the fun fair, it looks very joyful. The clouds looked like candy floss all swirled up together. All the little children happily walking to all the rides. One little boy is patiently waiting to go on the roller coaster. Standing next to it seemed very frightening. He was very amazed and excited. So this is my zoom out paragraph. This is the checklist that I should be using for my zoom out paragraph. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to colour code the paragraph. You won't be able to highlight the checklist in front of you because you don't actually have that. So instead, you're going to label. So my first step is to describe the atmosphere and mood. I've done that here. In the fun fair, it looks very joyful. My mood is that it's joyful. So I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to grab my purple pen and label it using the checklist. So this is the atmosphere. Slash mood. Okay. Next on my checklist is to describe the weather using a simile. The clouds look like candy floss all swirled up together. Perfect. That is my simile. So I'm going to grab my purple pen and I'm going to label that and I'm going to just do it up here on the side. Simile for the weather. Next up in my checklist is to describe two main items. Um, looking at my response, it seems I can only see one of the items, which is the roller coaster. So I'm going to label that as one main item. And then finally, describing a character's movement towards one item. So I've said that he is standing, oh, that's not my highlighter. I said that he is standing next to the roller coaster and it seemed very frightening. So that is a description of the character's movement or position. Character's movement. So as you can see, I've used that zoom out checklist to help colour code and label my zoom out paragraph. So now it's your turn. Here are the four checklists that you use for descriptive writing. Zoom out, zoom in, character, change and challenge. You need to now go through your descriptive writing and use the checklist to colour code and label each of your paragraphs, just as I have shown you. If you've only written zoom out and zoom out in checklists, you do the zoom out labelling and the zoom in checklist labelling. If you've done all four, you do all four. If you need to rewind the video to watch how I did it, you can do that. But it's important that you have the checklist in front of you so you can use them for your labelling. So pause the video now and only come back when your descriptive writing is highlighted and labelled, please. OK, so you should now have an excellent highlighted and labelled response. Now it's time to look at our EBI, the even better if, the things that we can do to improve. Our EBI today is to include fronted adverbials to vary the way your sentences start. We looked at fronted adverbials before Christmas. Remember, an adverb is a word that describes a verb or an action. 
or a state of being. Unfronted means it begins the sentence. So, first of all, I would like you to copy down this table, including the words here. Don't worry about them yet. I will explain them in a second when you come back to the video after copying this table. OK, so you should now have this table copied exactly how it appears on screen into your books. This table is going to help you choose the appropriate fronted adverbial. So how a fronted adverbial explains how an action happens. When a fronted adverbial tells you when an action happens where a fronted adverbial that tells you where something happens as you can see i've given you some examples an example of a how is bravely someone does an action bravely an example of when is after a while an example of where is behind the and the dot 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 means that you need to put something in so it could be behind the door behind the building, behind the car, depending on your piece of writing. Now, here's some more examples. Sadly, immediately, far away. Everywhere he or she looked, all of a sudden, as fast as they could, without a sound, down by the, eventually. So again, this could be down by the river, uh, down by the park down by the strange house so what you now need to do is you need to put these fronted adverbials into the correct column so you need to look at a fronted adverbial for example sadly does it go in how when or where when you've decided write it in to the column Pause the video and come back when you have put these fronted adverbials into the correct columns in your table. OK, if you're back, that means that you are ready to make some corrections. So make sure you give it a tick if you've got it right. Please make sure that you cross it out if you've put it in the wrong column and put it in the right one. You don't want to look back at the table and the fronted adverbials are in the wrong place because if they are that means you might use them incorrectly so it's very important that you make any corrections here so for how we have bravely sadly without a sound and as fast as they could the word they could be changed to he or she we have when after a while all of a sudden eventually immediately and for where we had behind the everywhere he or she looked again this could be changed to they far away and down by the pause the video make any purple pen corrections that you need to to ensure that your table looks exactly like the one on screen okay so now i would like you to go through your descriptive writing and add a minimum of four fronted adverbials in purple pen the reason i've said a minimum of four is if you have written your four full paragraphs you might want to put one in every single paragraph however if you have written two paragraphs you would need to put two in each of your paragraphs in purple pen I need to see four fronted adverbials. If you want to add more, that is up to you. So I'm going to show you how that looks before you go and do it. So I'm looking at this response that I used earlier for my what went well, and I'm going to add a fronted adverbial. So I'm going to add one at the beginning here. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow 
I'm going to write far away and then I need to do a comma. Now I've added this at the beginning, this capital letter needs to be changed. I need to make it a lowercase. So I've written far away in the fun fair, and I'm also going to add a comma here. So it says far away in the fun fair. It looks very joyful. So that is my fronted adverbial for this paragraph. And this student would now go through and add three more throughout their response. Pause the video and in the way that I've just shown you, use your table to add a minimum four fronted adverbials in purple pen, please. OK, so you should have added your fronted adverbials in. There should be four in purple pen. Now it's time to look at some spag. So our spelling, punctuation and grammar. It's very hard for us to do these corrections as I'm not able to scribble on your response. But there were some spelling errors that I want us to correct. Excitement. Joyfully. Roller coaster. Patiently. Joyfully and patiently could actually be used as fronted adverbials too. What I would like you to do is under today's date and title, copy each of these words three times. Copy excitement three times, joyfully three times, roller coaster three times, and patiently three times. Pause the video and come back when you have copied those four words in purple pen three times. Okay. Now you're back, that means that you are ready to submit your work. I'm sorry I forgot to add this to the slides yesterday, but just a reminder that in the subject of the email, it needs to have English lesson, the number, so one, two, three, four, or five, and then the date of that lesson. Well done to Nicole, who is sending really great emails with the subject like this. So it's very clear what lessons Nicole has done. Remember, if you're doing a handwritten piece of work, you need to find one of these icons on your Outlook on your phone to attach an image. And if you're uploading a document from your computer, you need to find this paper clip. Make sure that you submit your work now and I will see you in tomorrow's lesson.